All right, you guys want to go ahead and jump into the PS5 part? Yeah. Mason, Mason. I had a question about that. Oh, yeah, go ahead. Because yeah. uh, okay. Nexus, you brought up how uh, the PS5 has an issue that the PS3 has, correct? Uh-oh. Yes. Did I mishear you? So, uh, just, well, the, the DualShock 4's D-pad, it's a, it's a similar issue. So it's basically, the, uh, it's more like this D-pad here. A little bit, yeah. Okay. A, lot, a lot more like that one. Because I tried doing what you described with like the hitting back and down because yeah. I never really thought about it. And yeah, I think the PS4 pad realistically, like... I think it's worse on the PS4 controller. Uh, if really? you recall, um, if you're familiar with Sonic Fox, uh, there was an exhibition match between him and uh, Goichi, who's yeah. like a really big Dragon Ball Fighters player. And Sonic Fox arguably lost that exhibition match because of that error with the DualShock 4 controller. Because he kept he kept accidentally uh, down blocking when he should have been blocking high. And then uh, immediately after that, there's a company that makes custom DualShock 4 controllers that have individual buttons for the D-pads. And they, like, sponsored him and, like, gave him a free controller and stuff like that. Uh, because that is, like, it, I don't really see it being an issue for most games. But, like, for fighting games especially, that can be, like, make or break sometimes. Mm-hmm. Okay. Especially at Battle Beaver know. was the um the name of the company by the way. Battle Beaver, yes, yeah, sorry, yeah, forgot the name. I did notice that I got a lot better at MK at pulling off certain combos in MK11 when I was using a uh, a combo stick that I got on discount oh, yeah. rather than using my pad. And also, I, I want to say MK is probably more moves. optimized for pad, but like, I mean, it's personal preference. No, no, it for sure is. I prefer I just a mean, lot like, I noticed stick certain in those movements. Games. Yeah. Oh, sorry, I didn't talk over you. I didn't mean to. Uh, I, I perform better for arcade stick in most instances, but usually it's personal preference. A lot of modern games no, of are actually course. optimized for pad. Mm. Mesa, do you want to go yeah, and I... just jump into maybe your general experience with the PS5 so far? Um, sure. Um, so it's, it, it's been fast. Uh, <laughs> Hella fast. Um, bye bye loading screens. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Um. So yeah, I've been so for PS5, I've been mainly playing. Spider-Man and um, Astro's Playroom. Um, which, which one did you touch first? Uh, Astro, because, you know, Spider-Man had to download. Um, I, I guess going off that real quick, um, mm -hmm. I know I've probably way? been like the most vocal about being concerned about storage issues. Uh, since this is an SSD and that's only 667 gigabytes of available space. But I uh, before the show started, I downloaded... Um, DMC five, which is a 40 gigabyte game in like 15 minutes, like the download speed, whatever hardware they have in there is fucking insane. Mm -hmm. So I don't think it's going to be an issue, um, oh, have having space, um, as, as long as you don't have like bandwidth restraints, like if you have unlimited yeah. internet, you're good. Storage won't be an issue. Yeah. Um, yeah. So for, for Spider-Man though, I just want to talk about Spider-Man real quick. Um, I want to get my thoughts out. Um, for Miles Morales, uh, I actually ended up picking um, Fidelity 2, but for a completely different reason than everyone else. Uh, I have played so much of Spider-Man PS4 that that game in 60 FPS looks and feels wrong now. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> when was the and last time you played it? Last time I played... I mean, uh, it's what my PS4 was playing. I think if I boot up my PS4 right now, it's playing Spider-Man. But when um, was the last time you actually touched it? Because I, I did a replay through, I want to say, like... Six months ago, I play. I play it on and off about at least once or twice every week. Yeah. Okay. That, that yeah. regularly just stream himself in Discord, just just like swinging around. It's great. <laughs> just, just having fun. <laughs> um. So. So yeah. Um. So it's a but game looks incredible. Like when you when you switch between performance and uh, fidelity, you really notice that not not your reflection in the buildings, but the lack. of of the world's reflection in the buildings. And that, okay. that really that really changes um at least for me how 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 it uh, how how the game f feels. I know and before how you the, feel concrete in it. I know before the um the podcast the concrete, I, I, I switched over to performance and like you can very noticeably notice, you know, the frame rate difference. Uh but I haven't like really delved into it. Mm -hmm. But um, I'll, I'll probably wind up just jumping between the two like every 30 minutes or so just to see what I prefer. Mm -hmm. But um, I, w I will say this when um, on what going off of what Mason said um, while playing Miles Morales in, in Fidelity mode, uh, it was so I don't, I don't know what it I, I don't know what it is. Maybe it's the loading times or whatever, but it's I have never played a game 
that is just so smooth with its transitions mm. that it there's mm. there is literally no like weird black quick black jump cuts or like slow you know slow renderings of like a scene or anything it's just like instantaneous it's just like constant like back and forth jump cuts uh like when there's a talking scene or when there's a fighting scene it's just yeah. seamless constant crisp graphics and i'm like totally floored with how Does beautiful it, it all it, looks it's, it's kind of creating Does a bit of a weird like... Does it feel like how God of War did it? How like God of War was all one shot? I yeah. Well, it's it feels seamless now. Like it it, because it's not like it's not like last generation where they had to specifically make a game to be seamless, like God of War. It's like now we have the hardware to make games feel and look seamless, like they should be. I think we touched upon it upon in um, seven remake part two because it does the same thing in part one and like with the new hardware that's going to be so cool. I think we touched upon it in one of our first episodes where you know like uh, like Corey brought up God of War. They have to hide the loading scenes by making you go like very tight corridors. You have to slowly nudge through this crevice. Meanwhile, something like Half Life Two, which had horrible uh, loading loading stops, now is is absolutely completely hundred percent seamless. Mm-hmm. And um, it, and I remember there was a video, I think like two weeks ago, someone was playing The Witcher 3 on the Series X, and it it loaded too fast to the point where the world itself wasn't no, there. No, so, you like, all the way. so you see like under the ground, and then it pops up. So now uh, basically what they're having to do is to add a, like a one second like black fade yeah. to most games now, so they don't run into that uh, issue. One of the funniest ones I saw is uh, Banjo-Kazooie Nuts and Bolts. Uh, it has these funny little like loading screen gags. You don't even see the text start to appear. No. You see like the first like letter of the gag will appear because it like like slowly spells it out. You see like the first letter will appear and then it's done. You, you oh, won't wow. see any of them ever again. It's, it's weird to me that like because I've, I've said before like I genuinely am kind of sad that we're not going to see loading screen as like a game design mm-hmm. aesthetical thing anymore. But I mean, not, I wouldn't want to keep that at the cost of progress, but it's funny to me how I actually never thought about the fact that we've never, as much as things have gotten better and better and better until this point where now it's literally just, you're there. We've never really gotten away from loading screens till now, even if though they've gotten more seamless, they've gotten faster, they've got like, like I think back to, I guess the most notorious one would be like when Crash Bandicoot back in the day had the, and I can't remember if this is actually in the game or if it was some kind of April Fool's joke that like became real later, but like uh, the collecting fruit on the loading screen because it was going to distract you from taking too long. And like when that was a thing, you would have games in loading screens while the mm-hmm. actual game loaded. The infamous uh, Bandai Namco patent. Yeah. Well, I oh, which mean, one was that? So... Oh, they had a patent for years that they yeah. were the only ones that could use loading screen mini games. Like, no one else could do it. And sure enough, like, oh I think we God. talked about it last week. Now that the patent's expired, it doesn't fucking matter because now loading screens aren't a thing. Well, so when I was playing games on my Series X, Gears Tactics still had a loading screen in between missions. But to me, it didn't seem more like a loading screen because it was just like a character explaining what the mission was. And there was the bottom X on the screen. Like, oh, press this if you want to skip it and go straight to the mission and when i was doing dmc5 the loading screens were like five times faster like they were still there but dmc5 is 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 the same thing you can press x to exit out of the i found myself like kind of sitting back while there was a loading screen just because i was so used to it and then i would notice like oh shit it's already over when am i supposed to eat my food now i actually have to stop playing the game i just had a real (laughs) bad realization y'all what Anybody playing near replicant on their fucking PS5 is going to miss half the game. <laughs> yeah, yeah, there's a lot of. I'm shit not in joking. Those screens. Yeah, honestly, they'll probably put them oh, into put... like just notes you can pick up instead. I guess yeah. Well, because uh, for the chat, not like uh, for the chat, just feels like a, a Nexus pretty much lined it up. But like, there's key story stuff and there's Very like not key, key story Very stuff important. in loading screens. So like. I'm wondering if maybe they already worked since loading screens are already faster anyway. I'm now wondering if maybe they reworked that or if they kept just the ones that you're not really supposed to be able to see all of in one cut anyway. 
or or they're doing it like how DMC or, or what Gears Tactics did, where you can choose mm. to exit the load screen by like pressing X. Could work too. That would be good. That I would know be f- actually perfect. I, I for so- I haven't touched Demon Souls, and we'll let Nexus um, talk about in her segment. But um, mm. Nexus is if, very if, if, if it feels weird because <laughs> obviously, like people like complain about Bloodborne's loading screens; they were atrocious on the PS4, and um. In a no, weird no, way, and no, weird way, no, I'm no. going to appreciate them because they're a really nice pace of like, okay, this is your time to stop and reflect. How can you do better on this versus you know just tossing you back in there? I and mean, obviously, you still have to run back to the encounter and whatnot. But it was kind of nice having that as just like as a chill out moment. Yeah, uh, Mesa, go, going like, back to um, actually, I'll talk about it later when we talk about Demon Souls. Okay, but uh, can Mesa, I also go and- can I also talk about Demon Souls with Nexus? Yes, oh, you absolutely. may. <laughs> Mesa, how was the rest of your PS5 experience? Um, um, uh, Astrobot's Playroom is one. I've never considered myself a PlayStation person. I've always considered myself, you know, more of a Nintendo person. But I've always paid attention to Sony. You know, I've had their consoles every once in a while. My friends always had them. I always played at their houses. So, like going through that game and getting all the collectibles it it was such a nostalgic like oh like oh, emotional journey one all the, all the uh, collectibles are us. like um they're they're <laughs> oh. like they're pieces of hardware from like sony lore and like there's some like really forgotten about stuff in there that's mm-hmm. pretty cool dude i didn't even know that a pocket station existed in japan yeah. neither did i yeah. Oh, and, and for anyone curious, I screenshotted a lot of the Easter eggs you and did. stuff over on Twitter. Oh, yeah. I There's must have done like 30, 40 Nash fucking theory. screenshots. You were having there's a, fun. There is a Demon Souls uh, reference yes. in there, too. Yeah, I in saw it. Yeah, there's a, there's a Made in Black. Yeah, there's, there's, a, there's a reference. Uh, the I got all, everything. In there. Dante's in Wait, there. Wait, Pyramid. Oh, at the Seth yeah. Kage yeah. on Twitter. Yeah. You can find all of it. Yeah. I, I haven't yeah. finished it yet, so I. Colossus one. There's all I haven't finished it, so I still have yet to see so, all the references. It's a really they forgot fucked his up heavy tongue, rain bro. one. I, I spent as much time doing Twitter one. screenshots for this yeah. as much as I did playing it, and it yeah, is I just. Thought- it is just such a wonderful fucking launch game and it's, it's free it's pre-installed mm-hmm. like mm-hmm. as a game itself it is damn good and then you add all the nostalgia on top of it all the easter eggs it, i just had a dumb smile on my face the entire fucking and, time you know what's you know what's interesting like that you bring that up Museum. yeah and and uh my boyfriend actually brought up a good point and he's like well why doesn't why doesn't xbox do something like that i'm like I Why doesn't know. Nintendo like they oh, have Smash Bros? Is, oh, but this would be Nintendo, perfect for Nintendo. Nintendo could do something like this. Nintendo this actually brought up a conversation with some other friends. I was saying that uh, Xboxes are probably the most cynical consoles, and the yeah. fact that they are boxes that play video games and they don't really, <laughs> they only feel like they <laughs> have except for except for the Series game. X. Yeah. I see the Series X oozes a lot more personality than I feel like I felt was missing from it, previous Xbox. It has Fighting, fake like, green paint on it to make it look like, <laughs> like, like, like a, a monolithic like rectangle. Having like the green bit at the top mm-hmm. is like it's oozes personality. It's really it's I just so love the balls dumb, to be like it looks so like a PC cool. tower. What the fuck do you want? Oh. Shut up. I, <laughs> I wanna talk I'm calling it the monolith. I'm calling it the monolith from like two thousand one a space odyssey because that's literally yeah. what it is. I, w- I want to talk a bit about um, th- this relates so much to Astro because you can't really disassociate the two, but the dual sense controller, the oh, new yeah. um, placing controller, fantastic. but like it, it, it's just yeah. such a, a fantastic, fu- Mwah, but uh, <laughs> it's it's such a technical <laughs> showcase for what the console and what the controller can do. Um, mm-hmm. So there's the haptic feedback, which will give you like mm-hmm. a very uh, diegetic like feel for like whatever your character is doing if you're using your lasers you can feel it go from like the top of the controller down to the bottom if you're taking a yeah. step with your left or right foot it's left or right if you're walking on sand area. it feels like sand there's oh yeah rain area it feels like there's actual like rain falling so whenever deep. whenever you're on ice or you're on the glass you can feel like the little feeling in there and the sound on the speaker actually does a lot to complement that as well so there's and, uh, also real quick about the speaker. Uh, so I was watching my boyfriend play bug snacks, and every time you you catch a bug snack, mm-hmm. it actually it like coming? it squeaks its it squeaks its name That's through so the speaker. Cute. So like a strawberry, like the strawberry one. When you catch a strawberry, you'll hear strawberry like through the speaker. <laughs> That's adorable. 
<laughs> I, I, I'm just gonna lose it. I know the uh, I know the PS4 did that as well, but the audio quality wasn't there and it wasn't it utilized wasn't as much. Mm-hmm. But like combined with the haptic feedback, it's really freaking cool. And um, I mean, I feel like the PlayStation 4's uh, in like the like the speaker in it was always best used in horror titles. I think back to uh, the Evil Within Two when you fight that like Sadako type ghost. How mm-hmm. her like her like groans and her like footsteps would come through the controller and honestly scare the piss out of me. Hmm. See, my or, favorite like, use of that kind of oh, or God, like sorry. the baby. I, uh, I, you are a strong game. person for finishing that game, by the way. I cannot, I cannot wait to experience the the haptic the haptic feedback with this controller with a horror game because oh, that's oh, ab- Resident Evil Eight, baby. Mm-hmm. A lot yeah, of the technology, yeah. like three D audio and the the controller is like it's going to be terrifying for. I, I was describing to a co- scary and Demon Souls. I was describing <laughs> to a coworker like they said like oh what is haptic feedback I'm just like it's basically surround sound except it's rumble like on your controller massage you have exactly. to really and even then explaining it verbally is hard to understand because you just yeah, have to right. experience it like I, like i'm slightly annoyed that uh sony didn't follow suit with uh, xbox you know allowing you to use the dualshock 4 and mm-hmm. accessories but if it's doing like all this kind of cool shit like fuck yeah sign me up mm-hmm. and uh, uh, and i didn't know this apparently even the new call of duty and um mm-hmm. uh makes use of it and That's uh, awesome. i guess the other part we didn't talk about the uh, adaptive uh, triggers, uh, they'll apply yes. more pressure based on whatever context you're doing. Like in uh, mm-hmm. Astro, if you're launching your rocket ship, you have to like press down on the damn thing. It gives you a lot of it gives you a lot of uh, restraint on it. Mm-hmm. There's like a gear. Same thing with the bow and arrow. There's a gear in each of the buttons of the oh R2 God. and L2. So that's what's that's what's holding it back is that there's a little gear that resi- that resists your pressure and then Would it gives you say away. That it's a metal gear. Oh, Lord. I hate you. Sorry. I had <laughs> just, I Get, leave the camera. Leave the camera. Okay, <laughs> I, I will say, okay, okay, us, okay, using a <laughs> using a bow in a game has never <laughs> felt as freaking good. <laughs> I, I, I don't want to... Well, maybe I will speak for everyone. I think I'm the only one here who's who does archery uh, semi-regularly. And uh, feeling the uh, pressure as you pull back and then feeling it loosen as as you go on the on the trigger is fucking really fucking cool. Well, mm-hmm. I'm sure you saw that they announced that The Last of Us Two is getting haptic feed f- feedback. I do not want to touch that game until they put that in because <laughs> oh, that's gonna yeah. be beautiful. Oh, yeah, they said that it's coming. I can't remember if they said December or early early next year, but they said they are actively working on haptic feed feedback on it. Oh, there goes Blaine. Uh oh, Blaine did. Oh God, are you okay? <laughs> There's um to go back to like DMC five like. Like I was saying with Nero, when you do a max act, it and it just rumbles the whole controller. It really feels like mm-hmm. just like the Red Queen is like, or the, yeah, the Red Queen's like ready to fucking go. Mm-hmm. Like it's uh, so cool. Well, and even like the Blue Rose like it, it shakes the whole controller and you fire it. So so dope. And just, even something as simple as like when I started uh, Miles Morales, like. And you're sitting, you're standing as Miles in yeah. the subway, and the mm-hmm. door opens. You feel it on the right side of your controller, oh and you feel the you feel the subway coming to a halt. And it's just like, this is insane. This yeah. is absolutely innovative technology. It really helps with immersion, like a lot. Yeah, 